Hi, this is Paul Pachter, the Chief Executive Officer of Long Island Cares and the Harry Chapin Regional Food Bank, and welcome to Breaking Bread at Long Island Cares, our very own online program, which we produce twice a month and appears right here on YouTube. Today, we're going to be talking about food drives, and there are many that benefit Long Island Cares every single day. And there's no one better on our staff to discuss the issue of food drives and how to get involved than Billy Ganyu, our food drive and community event manager, who's with us today on Breaking Bread. Billy, welcome. Paul, thanks for having me today. So Billy, how do people or businesses get involved in sponsoring food drives to benefit Long Island Cares? We try to make the process as easy as possible. So anyone interested in hosting a food drive would go directly onto our website, LICares.org, mm -hmm. and fill out the food drive registration form. Through that page, they can access our posters, our, the list of our most needed items, tips and tricks on how to get the most out of your food drive. Mm -hmm. Once their registration is received by me, I reach out to them with more information regarding pickup dates, drop-off dates. I send them more flyers, and we're able to have a conversation about what we really need, how they want to host their drive, and I'm able to talk to them about hosting a virtual food drive as well. Talk a little bit about the virtual food drive, because I, I don't think a lot of people are aware that you can actually sponsor a food drive. Uh, and never needing one of our boxes or our posters. We could all do this through technology. So how, do, how does one go about setting up a virtual food So drive? we work with a company called You Give Goods. Uh, they, mm -hmm. are a, they are a for-profit company. However, they do not charge us anything. They work for nonprofit organizations, religious centers, and schools. Mm -hmm. And basically, it's almost like we, we have a, a wish list. So if someone were interested in hosting a virtual food drive, they would be connected with Mary Lonergan, who is my contact at You Give Goods, okay. and uh, there a page is created just for them with a shopping cart of items we request. So I'm able to delete items if we don't need them, add what we really need, and they get their own link that they can send out through email, they can send out on Facebook, any forms of social media. Uh, people, a lot of times with, with boxes, when they have a physical box in their office, they come in and they say, oh, I, I forgot my can of food today. Mm -hmm. But if they have a link, and I've seen this happen, they pull out the credit card and they purchase right on the spot. So are people donating food uh, through the You Give Goods website, or is that directly linked to licares.org? They're donating through You Give Goods. Okay. So they make a purchase on You Give Goods. They're able right. to fill out their shopping cart. Mm -hmm. Um, it includes tax and shipping, mm -hmm. and we get 5% back on every purchase made for Long Island Cares. And at the end of the drive, or at my request, You Give Goods sends us the food. So I'm able to know that, you know, Paul Pachter hosted his own virtual food drive. Mm -hmm. I can see how many pounds of food you raised, and it, all, it gets sent directly to us. So we get the food, plus we get 5% of, of the yes. purchase that people make. And the food is delivered directly to our warehouse here in Hapa. Eat Correct. Excellent. What kind of, uh, you know, I, I hear all the time about specialty food drives, special event food drives. Uh, and people often want to know, you know, what do you need the most? And, you know, do you need diapers? Do you need uh, pet food? Do you need something else that people may need that they can't readily get in the supermarket or anywhere else? So what kind of food or other type of items could people sponsor a food drive uh, for to, to benefit Long Island Cares? So obviously as the food bank, um, hosting a food drive is beneficial. Mm -hmm. We do have a list of our top 10 most needed items, which is provided through our member agencies. Mm -hmm. So those items include things like hot and cold cereal, uh, pr canned protein, so tuna, chicken, ham, okay. uh, things like canned vegetables and fruits, pasta, uh, we run a program called Baxter's Pet Pantry mm -hmm. that people, you know, we're in need of cat food, dog food, any type of pet food they're able to provide. So some people host their own pet food drives. Mm -hmm. We just started on the first, our eighth annual legislative pet food drive. So we have about 30 plus legislators throughout Long Island that are hosting pet food drives at various locations, mm -hmm. and that'll run until April 30th. We have people who host school supply drives, uh, people who host drives just for personal care items mm -hmm. or drives just for our homeless population. Okay. So based on what people are interested in, I'm able to kind of filter and let them know this is what we need for each program. When we talk or you talk about the 8th Annual Legislative uh, Pet Food Drive that benefits Baxter's right. Pet Pantry, 
Uh, we're talking about legislators on the federal, the state, and the local level. Uh, how would a legislator watching this program right now on YouTube uh, get involved in the 8th Annual Legislative Pet Food Drive? We have a page dedicated on our website under mm -hmm. the Host of Food Drive page for the 8th Annual food pet, uh, Legislative Pet Food Drive. So it lists every legislator, assembly member, senator, um, town council that is participating, and then mm -hmm. there's a registration form. A lot of the, the participants, which is really exciting, reach out to local libraries, Girl Scout troops. Mm -hmm. uh, Legislator Rudy Sunderman has a Girl Scout troop that has now scheduled six stuff of trucks Ooh. So their first one raised 411 pounds of pet mm -hmm. food, and they have five more scheduled throughout the rest of the drive. Senator Phil Boyle works with an animal relief organization. Sunderman McDonough works with a school district, and a lot of people they make a competition out of it amongst mm -hmm. themselves, mm -hmm. so they try to get as many people involved as possible. Sometimes, you know, some people just want to host it at their office, some do virtually, and some will get people out there in the community hosting stuff at trucks. So the legislators are really uh, reaching out to their local communities, yes. their schools, their Girl Scout troops, and making this really a special event uh, to help raise pet food and pet supplies to support Baxter's Pet Pantry. I was going to ask you uh, about how much food comes into Long Island Cares from the food drives, but I have some statistics and then, you know, I guess the question I would have is, you know, help our viewers understand uh, how, under your leadership and management, uh, food drives have become uh, increasingly successful. So let me, let me share the statistics with you. In 2018, Donated food, whether it's from a food drive, our retail donation program, donated food uh, totaled 3,512,801 pounds in 2018. That is actually a 1.1 million pound increase wow. or 45.8 percent. Food drives in 2017 totaled 709,319 uh, pounds of food. And last year, it jumped up by 8.5% to 768,958 pounds. What do you see as, you know, the success of the food drives and why did we see an 8.5% increase? So for 2017, mm -hmm. the increase was mostly in part due to our relief efforts for Puerto Rico. Oh, okay. So uh, over a quarter million pounds of food were raised in 2017 mm -hmm. just for Puerto Rico. Uh, so those numbers in 2018, when I started the year, I was concerned, how are we gonna bring this much more in? How mm -hmm. can we outdo ourselves in 2018 from what we did in 2017? So on my end, I started scheduling stuff of trucks almost every weekend of the year. Mm -hmm. So we had volunteers out actually this past weekend at ShopRite in West Babylon, mm -hmm. standing outside handing flyers. Uh, customers are very generous. And this happens almost every weekend where we're bringing in two to 3,000 pounds of food from the drives alone, mm -hmm. which is hiking up. I think there was a, we did nearly 100 stuff of trucks in 2018 which we would not have been able to do without our volunteers. It's almost like every weekend there's a exactly. stuff truck event going on. Somewhere on Long Island. On Long Island. Um, we saw an increase in people doing virtual food drives and realizing mm -hmm. that it was, for them, it was easier because they could, if they had multiple offices, mm -hmm. they can share amongst the offices. Mm -hmm. They can do in-house, they don't have to deal with a food drive box. We saw, one of the things that I really tried pushing people and volunteers is that People want to volunteer with us and maybe we won't have an opportunity when they want to, but mm -hmm. doing a food drive is a form of volunteering for us. We wouldn't be able to provide food if people weren't bringing it in. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the Girl Scout troop I mentioned earlier, working with Liberty Sunderman, mm -hmm. they do this on their own. All we do is pick up the food. They set mm -hmm. up the drive, they go out there. I saw an increase in students doing it on their own and reaching out and just saying, hey, we saw that you do this at, you know, King mm -hmm. Cullen or ShopRite and they've gone on and picked up their own, which has been incredible seeing students just say, I'm doing this food drive. Gotcha. And that's really the word spreads. Mm -hmm. When they see us out there every weekend, a lot of times people will say, yeah, I was, at, I was shopping and I saw you guys, how mm -hmm. can I do my own? Excellent. And people picking up, you know, in response to the legislative pet food drive or we did the first adopt a family for Thanksgiving mm -hmm. last year. Which was very successful. That, that 
brought in almost 50,000 pounds of food alone, mm -hmm. and we were able to provide meals to over 3,000 families just through that program. You, you know, you talked about the legislative pet food drive, you talk about the stuff a truck, and, you know, some of this is very unique in terms of raising uh, awareness, in terms of bringing in additional donated food to the regional food bank. Uh, as you've coordinated all of these food drives, anything stand out to you in terms of being unique, a unique food drive? I mean, we've done pet food, we've done the stuff a truck, you just did the adopt a family. I know recently uh, you brought in a significant donation of uh, Bomba socks yes. uh, for people. So maybe to the people that are watching us, what are some of the unique things some of the more unique food drives that you've coordinated so that people get an idea that, you know what, it may not just be about food. We've had um, people, Aramark actually, every year, they like to create food kits or meal kits for children okay. that are on need. Mm -hmm. So they get a grant and they purchase the food items that would go in like a little pencil case, mm -hmm. uh, pencil box, I should say. And they made maybe 1,500 a year ago, and we were able to provide those on our breakfast food truck mm -hmm. uh, to the children in need. And it had uh, juice, it had breakfast. You know, they did this right on their own in this room, packing mm -hmm. the food. We've seen people um, doing blanket drives for our homeless population. Okay. Uh, one of the, I think one of the more fun ones that I see are when students build structures mm -hmm. out of food. We just had one come in where they. They raised a boat ton of soup and they made a pirate ship, a lighthouse, and a regular ship out of those cans of food. And I think it was over 11,000 cans of mm. just soup. Um, I really like seeing when people play on words or mm -hmm. play on things that are happening. So with the Super Bowl, there's the mm -hmm. Super Bowl spelled right. S-O-U-P-E-R. And a lot of schools participate in that. Uh, I think when celebrities and artists and just musicians get involved mm -hmm. too, we'll see an increase in student participation because they want, if there's a concert, they want that person at their school. Mm -hmm. So in 2016, when we had the concert, uh, the contest with the band Perry, mm -hmm. the winning school brought in over 5,000 pounds of food and we were picking up daily from them. And then before that, uh, we did a food drive with Nick Cannon that brought in over nearly 150,000 that was incredible pounds of food. that was incredible so we have about two minutes remaining in the program I have one last question for you and that is are there peak times during the year where uh, you need food drives absolutely. to occur absolutely what would that be? so October November December we obviously are in need and we accept the food and we were very grateful for their food but as soon as the holidays end we see a, a really steep decrease in what we're getting okay so I think one of the things that I try to do is really encourage people and, and try to teach people that you know hunger is a year-round issue. Mm -hmm. So we'll see a, a steep decrease in the winter because everyone's just donated for the holidays. Mm. But I would say the summer is when we're most in need. Children are no longer receiving the free and reduced lunch that they were mm -hmm. receiving in schools, mm -hmm. which means the families are need to provide more meals for their children. Mm -hmm. So we see an increase. Uh, with people coming in over the summer and a lot of people aren't thinking about food drives in the summer because they're on vacation right. and You're hungry to you know you eat breakfast mm -hmm. you eat lunch you sure. eat dinner hunger doesn't go away because right. it's the summer and We have seen an increase in drives which there have been a group of assembly members doing summer food drives They'll mm -hmm. be doing their third annual one this year okay. uh, to help kind of offset what we what we're in need of but I would say that the really the peak time where we need food drives is, is summer. Summer when things are quiet, the kids are out of school, people yeah. are on vacation. And again, if you want to uh, sponsor a food drive to benefit Long Island Cares, you simply need to log on to our website at www.licares.org uh, where you'll find all the information. Or you can always call 631-582-FOOD and uh, we'll get you together with Billy Ganyu, and uh, we'll raise a lot of food to help our neighbors in need. Billy, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, us. Paul. Thanks okay. for having me. So, Billy, thanks again for joining us, and thank you for tuning in to Breaking Bread at Long Island Cares. If you like the program, if you want to know more about our services, what we do to help feed 272,000 of our neighbors in need, simply subscribe to the Long Island Cares channel right here on YouTube. So we'll see you next time on Breaking Bread at Long Island Chaos.